Welcome to a screencast that will introduce the basics of acid-base titrations. One of the most important methods of chemical analysis that chemists use quite frequently is called a titration. In a titration, we have a titrant that is gradually added to an analyte until we reach an end point and typically the end point is something we will be able to see a color change occur. So we have a clear colorless solution for example and the solution turns pink. Uh, so this is actually uh, an acid-base titration using an indicator called phenolphthalein that's colorless in acidic solution and sort of a pinkish purple in basic solution and what happens is at the end point, uh, more properly referred to as an equivalence point, we've added enough base to fully neutralize the acid and then we actually have a little bit excess uh, because that's what's needed to see the color change. And when properly done, uh, titrations can be very, very accurate. Now, when we do a titration, we typically know one concentration and measure two volumes. So uh, an example would be we know our volume of analyte, we don't know its concentration, we know our concentration of titrant, and then we add a known volume or a measured volume to get to our, our end point where the color has changed, and then that allows us to determine the concentration of the unknown substance, the analyte. Uh, and we have a little bit of math to do, a little bit of stoichiometric calculations, and there's different uh, variations of this depending upon what you're trying to find and uh, we'll do an example or two of this. Our first example is of a sample of acid mine drainage from the Iron Mountain mine uh, just outside of Redding, California. And what happens when uh, mining is done if the rocks that are cut into contain sulfur and that is exposed then to the atmosphere and to water, sulfuric acid is produced. And the Iron Mountain Mine was infamous for having the worst water in the world. And the reason it was designated the worst water in the world was because it was so concentrated in sulfuric acid. So here we have a situation where, let's say, an environmental chemist is uh, testing the acid mine drainage to determine how concentrated the uh, mine water is. And we have a 25 milliliter sample of mine water and it required 36.97 milliliters of a 0.1834 molar sodium hydroxide solution for it to be neutralized. Here are some researchers collecting samples at the Iron Mountain mine and then here is a picture of the apparatus. We have a 25 milliliter sample of sulfuric acid 25.00 milliliters because we've used a volumetric pipette to measure it very accurately. We titrate using the sodium hydroxide solution of known molarity, in this case 0.1834 molar. The sodium hydroxide solution has been standardized to know its, its concentration very accurately. And then it took 36.97 milliliters of this solution to neutralize uh, the acid and when that happens, the solution goes from clear and colorless to a light pink. And the goal is to get as light a permanent pink as possible. We would like to not over titrate um, by very much. We always end up over titrating a little bit. We'd like to be at by as little as possible. And by doing this, we can find in this case the concentration or the molarity of this solution. All right, so here is our problem. And first of all, what is the reaction equation for the reaction that takes place during this titration? And sulfuric acid, H2SO4, reacts with sodium hydroxide to make sodium sulfate and water. And when you write out and then balance the equation, you realize that there's two moles of NaOH needed to neutralize one mole of sulfuric acid. Note that this is an acid-base reaction, of course, and it's also referred to as a neutralization reaction. Okay, then we move on to the calculation. And 
we have 36.97 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution or 0 0.03697 liters of sodium hydroxide solution and we've converted to liters because we use the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution 0.1834 moles per one liter of the solution to convert from liters into moles and then since there are two moles of NaOH required to titrate or react with one mole of sulfuric acid a second conversion allows us to calculate uh, the number of moles of sulfuric acid in our sample and that turns out to be 0 0.003390 moles of H2SO4. Now we're not done yet. The problem asked for the concentration or molarity of the sulfuric acid solution. So what we do next is we remember that molarity is moles per liter. Moles of H2SO4 solution or moles of H2SO4 in in this case 25 milliliters or 0 0.02500 liters of H2SO4 solution. And when we do that calculation we get 0.1356 moles per liter or we often write it 0.1356 molar capital M H2SO4. So that problem has been solved. All right, well, let's do one more example. Um, you might end up doing maybe a lab that's similar to this. We have a sample of a monoprotic acid. That means it has one hydrogen or one proton, because uh, hydrogen ion is just simply a proton. So it's one hydrogen in the acid rather than the two hydrogens like in H2SO4. And then it required 28.32 milliliters of a 0.1956 molar sodium hydroxide solution to reach the endpoint. And in this case, we're trying to find the molar mass of the acid rather than the concentration because it's just a sample of solid. Now, what we would do is we would actually dissolve the sample of the monoprotic acid in some water, put that in a flask, do the apparatus as shown before, and titrate with the sodium hydroxide and again try to get to our uh, light pink endpoint using phenolphthalein as our indicator. And if we do this and we uh, calculate the molar mass and we do a careful job, then we might be able to identify the acid, especially if we have some choices of acid and we knew that our unknown monoprotic acid was one of a series of choices, then if we get its molar mass we should be able to determine which substance or which acid it probably is. So first of all the reaction monoprotic acid means there's just one hydrogen and it's an unknown acid so it's H something we don't know what the something is yet but it's H something it reacts with NaOH and we make a salt Na something and water and it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So similar to what we did before we take the volume of sodium hydroxide convert to liters, so 0 0.02832 liters of sodium hydroxide. We convert from liters to moles for the sodium hydroxide using the molarity. And then this one is one-to-one -one stoichiometry, so one mole of NaOH reacts with one mole of HX, and that will then give us our moles of HX in this sample of our acid. And now remember, we're not trying to find moles of HX, we're trying to find molar mass. But if you, you remember what molar mass is, it's how many grams there are per mole of that substance. And we now know both the grams of our sample and the moles of our sample. And grams to moles is what gives us molar mass, providing both numbers refer to the same amount of substance, which they do in this case. So. 1.147 grams of HX divided by 0 0.005539 moles of HX gives us 207.1 grams per mole for the molar mass of our unknown acid. And now if we had a list of acids and we knew our unknown acid was one of these, then whichever one ends up having uh, or whatever this molar mass is closest to for, uh, with reference to the molar masses of the uh, on other acids or the known acids, that's the one we would pick. 
So that's it. Two examples of acid-base titrations. Hopefully that gets across the basic idea of how these types of titration work.